I asked a group of kids, who invented the game of basketball? Some of them said, Michael Jordan. <laughs> and uh, some said, Larry Bird. Dr. James A. Naismith, the inventor of basketball. Dr. Naismith, how did you happen to invent basketball? It was in the winter of 1891 when I was physical instructor at Springfield College in Massachusetts. We had a real New England blizzard. For days, the students couldn't go outdoors, so they began roughhousing in the halls. The boys began tackling, kicking and punching in the clinches. One day, I had an idea. I called the boys to the gym, divided them up into teams of nine, and gave them an old soccer ball. I showed them two peach baskets I'd nailed up at each end of the gym, and I told them the idea was to throw the ball into the opposing team's peach basket. I blew a whistle, and the first game of basketball began. Well, I think sports in general is one of the avenues that brings people together. It is a natural, the game of basketball, to cross gender boundaries. It's staggering, to be honest. It's just something that Dr. Nate Smith could never comprehend uh, what was going to happen in the next 50 to 100 years. Sports has always been the place that transcends color, occupation, political philosophies. So for sure, so it doesn't surprise me that the guy that created basketball was that type of guy. It's an amazing story to hear of this Canadian man who invented this incredible sport for the world. Look, this is for you, rule number five. No shouldering, holding, pushing, tripping, or striking. I'm just proud to be a, a part of uh, the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame. I see uh, Dr. Naismith inventing it. Well, I just remember him as a kind gentleman, and just he's the one who started the game that I left. I'm really happy to be working with Keith Zimmerman on this project. It's really exciting to work with someone like Keith who has so much knowledge about this game and even some artifacts that people haven't even seen yet. This movie will parallel my life and Keith's life as we grew up in the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s to present day. We're going to cover everything from the beginning of basketball to where basketball is headed. People basketball has had an impact on society, in fact, sports in general. 1933, my grandfather's 72 years old. He's sitting in his chair, first day of classes. And he asked me, was there anything he could do to help me? And I said, yes, I'm looking for Dr. Naismith. I, I, I want to be a physical education major, and I've been told he's my advisor. Jewish people are playing Jewish people, blacks playing blacks. He said, who told you that? And I said, my dad. And he said, come on in. Dad's always right. In 1978, John McClendon followed his teacher into the Basketball Hall of Fame. Basketball was being played all over the country. And in 1936, I saw it played for the first time at the Olympic Games. When they won the Canadian Championships in Windsor, uh, there was a few problems. I got permission actually from my parents that it was okay for me to go over there because I was Jewish. It's okay, if you mind your own business, you go. They played outdoors in the rain on that converted tennis court, kept the score low with the Americans eking out a 19-8 victory. The V8s had to be content with their silver medals and a most unusual souvenir. At the end of the game, the final whistle blew, and fortunately, my father ended up with the ball in his possession. Both Hitler and Naismith touched this ball. He saw Mum sitting at the side. Uh, in the spectator section and he ran over and slid the ball under the blanket so that she could keep the ball. He figured at that time this would be a nice little souvenir to bring home from Germany. Enter Abe Saperstein, a white Jewish immigrant from Chicago's north side. With an entrepreneurial spirit and a love of sports, Saperstein saw a business opportunity. The things that I did to boys in Germany, the ball and the different type of shots and all, that was a part that I played. Whenever the Globetrotters came into town, they made it fun for everybody, but I think it had deeper meanings. There was a war going on, and the Globetrotters came in town. Gunshots, every, all, all over the place. One side was over on this side of the arena, one group was over on this side of the arena. The war actually stopped, let us play the game, and then after we left, then they continued the war. The American consulate came to them and said, we are now talking to the Argentinian people. Now that kind of ambassadorship helped the image of the United States of America itself. The only thing that matters is you got game. 
you can show up with money and escalate a beater or take the bus. You can have a rich daddy or no daddy at all. You can be black, white, brown, yellow, red, it doesn't matter. Can you play? Because the game will reveal itself, your character. You can have a lot of game and have no character, or no game and a lot of character, but after a little bit of playground basketball, we will know everything there is about you. And the whole thing started with a couple of peach baskets I put up in a little gym. I guess it just goes to show what you can do if you have to. Indeed it does.